In this video, we'll talk about psychological measurement. This deals with how we measure things like depression or mood or intelligence. We'll talk about the nature of variables that psychologists study and look at some practical issues in psychometrics. Let's start off with the definition. Psychological measurement is the assignment of scores to individuals so that the scores represent some type of characteristic of the individual. Examples of measuring stuff include weighing yourself by stepping on a scale or checking the temperature with a thermometer. In a sense, you're taking a characteristic and you're quantifying it or labeling it. You can measure things in different ways, and you don't even need any special tools or instruments to do so. Let's use an example of working memory capacity. Working memory is the ability to hold and manipulate several items in mind at any given time. So how would you measure working memory capacity? You can use what's called a backwards digit span task. In this task, assuming that you're the experimenter, you would read a list of two numbers to your participant. Then you ask the participant to recite them out loud in a backwards order. If they get that right, then you do it again and you increase the list of numbers to three. You keep gradually increasing the list of numbers until they make a mistake. Then the maximum number of items that they can recite backwards without making an error is kept as their working memory capacity. Working memory capacity is what you are measuring and the digit span task is the tool you use to measure it. Some things are easy to measure. How old someone is, um, whether or not they're female or male, do you have a college, deg college degree or not. Other things in psychology are not so easy to measure because you can't directly observe them. You can't measure someone's intelligence just by looking at them. Likewise, you can't tell much about a person's personality just by looking at them also. These characteristics that cannot be observed directly are called constructs. With a given construct, psychologists have to find ways to measure them appropriately. Sometimes it can be just with one test, but oftentimes it's made up of a lot of different parts. We'll use the construct of intelligence as an example. If you take an IQ test, you get one score, an intelligence quotient. But the test is made up of several subtests that measure different facets or things, and they're all used together to measure someone's intelligence. This visualization shows on the left G, which is the general factor of intelligence. G is made up of several subdomains like crystallizability, someone's processing speed, people's visuospatial ability, and memory. They can tell a slightly different picture, but each of those domains are all highly correlated. With conceptual definitions of constructs, you can specify relationships or correlations between different parts. You can say, I'm measuring general intelligence, and I know we measure these domains, and I'm pretty sure that if someone is good at visuospatial ability, I could be reasonably sure that they're also probably not so bad when it comes to processing speed. With measurements, we have to operationalize things. An operational definition is a definition of a variable and specifically how it is going to be measured. Science makes progress because we operationalize everything instead of focusing on essentialism. There are certain things science can't answer. Think of them as childlike questions, like what does it all mean or what is the true purpose of life? These questions can get you stuck, these kinds of ultimate questions. Operationalism, then, is grounded in the fact that theories have to correspond to observable events. Being hungry is not just a gnawing feeling in your stomach, that's a subjective feeling about hunger. So we specify it. Hunger is the amount of food deprivation over the past 24 hours, or hunger is your current blood sugar levels. There are different categories that these fall into. Self-report measures report on thoughts and feelings and actions. This could be like you taking a survey. Behavioral measures are when something about your behaviors are observed and recorded. This could be like someone recording how long it takes you to perform a given task. And there are physiological measures, and these are recordings of any type of physiological process such as heart rate, galvanic skin response, or brain activity. There can be multiple operational definitions for a variable or construct. For instance, we can measure age in years or months. They're both correct, it just depends on what is the appropriate um, thing you're trying to measure. Criminal activity can be measured in the number of times someone has been arrested, or it can be measured in the number of times or number of robberies someone has done. When there are multiple operational definitions of the same variable, these are converging operations. When they give similar pattern of results, 
it's a pretty good indication that the construct being measured is done so effectively. To nail this concept down, let's go over just a few more examples. Say we want to measure memory. Well, we can operationalize um, it by saying memory is the number of items recalled from a list. Cute aggression is kind of a weird phenomenon where people have this aggressive feeling when they see a cute animal or a baby or something like that. I read a study recently, actually, where some researchers um, studied this, and they did so by having people view pictures of cute versus neutral pictures. They also gave subjects bubble wrap while they watched or viewed these pictures, and they measured cute aggression by seeing how many bubbles they popped. I'm not sure if this is a completely valid measure, but here, cute aggression is the number of bubbles popped. Okay, stress could be the number of hairs pulled out of someone's head, and anger could be the number of times a person shouts at someone else in 24 hours. Uh, these probably aren't the best examples, but I hope they get the point across. Be thinking about this and see if you can come up with a few examples on your own on how you can measure something like this. When we do measure something, it's important to know at what level of measurement you're at because it matters down the road in terms of what you're able to do with that measure and the kind of claims that you can make. There are four types or levels and you should be able to describe all four and be able to look at a measurement and decide what level that measure is at. The first is nominal. This is the lowest level of measurement and is used for categorical variables or something that you put a label on. This is like recording gender, male or female, or measuring whether you have a high school education or not. Um, ethnicity is another example of nominal. This level shows whether any two individuals are the same or different on these variables being measured. This level is used in almost every study when reporting descriptive statistics about your sample, but it doesn't tell us anything about the ordering of pairs. Left-handers are not ahead or behind right-handers, it's just a categorical difference. This brings us to our second level, which is ordinal. Here you assign scores to people that represent the rank, so ordinal think order. This now tells us not only if something is the same or different, but also if one thing is higher or lower than another. The main example for this is a Likert scale. You might have seen these before or answered these types of questions in surveys. You answer a question with, say, either strongly or slightly disagree, or slightly or strongly agree. They are still mostly categorical labels, but it's directional, it's ordered. The main limitation with this type of measurement is that it's almost impossible to determine the difference between each label. How do we know that the difference between slightly disagree and slightly agree is a, the same as the difference between slightly agree and strongly agree? It's dependent on the person and the question. There are no standard differences between each level. Next, there's the interval level. This assigns scores using numerical scales. In this case, we have both the same or different information and ordered information, but now we have intervals which have the same difference throughout. The classic example for an interval, interval level of measurement is temperature. In describing temperature, we are confident that the difference between 30 and 40 degrees is the same as the difference between 100 and 110 degrees. In both cases, it's consistently a 10 degree difference. The tricky thing about these measures, and probably what's most hard to remember and understand, is that there's no true zero in these measurements. In the case of temperature, zero does not mean the absence of heat. It's still a degree of heat, just like negative temperatures as well. So it's not like anchored to anything. It is this reason that makes it really impossible to calculate ratios for this type of measurement. 80 degrees is not twice as hot as 40 degrees because there's no starting point. It took me a really long time to understand this point because it kind of seems that 80 is twice as hot as 40. So let's phrase this in a slightly different way. 20 degrees Celsius is not twice as hot as 10 degrees Celsius, even though it might seem this way. 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 20 degrees Celsius is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'd have trouble convincing anyone that 68 degrees Fahrenheit is twice as hot as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Intelligence scores are often considered to be on the interval level. You never see scores of zero because intelligence scores are normed to have a mean of 100, um, but there is no like real absence of intelligence and no true zero. Okay, so finally we get to the ratio level. 
This involves in assigning scores in such a way that there is a true zero point that represents the complete absence of the quantity. Height is a good example for this. Five inches describes the height of something, but zero inches does describe no height at all. Ratio is considered to be the top level of measurement. Like nominal, it provides a category for each object. Numbers can be the labels or categories. Like ordinal, there's an ordering. Um, numbers are ordered, some are higher, some are lower. Like interval, differences between the two levels are the same. So the difference between one and two is the same between two and three. In addition to interval, the same ratio at two places in the scale carries the same meaning because there's a true zero. Response times are another good example of ratio. It can take someone 300 milliseconds to respond to a picture, but theoretically it could take someone zero seconds to respond, indicating no response time at all. Then you can finally make that comparison that 600 milliseconds is twice as slow as 300 milliseconds. Okay, so before we end this video, let's go over a couple examples and see if you can guess which type of measurement each is. The first is the different flavors of chocolate. The second is the number of pencils in your pencil holder. The third is letter grades on your math test. The fourth is years of historical events. And the fifth is different types of religions. So go ahead and pause this video and try and write down your answers and we'll go over them here in just a second. All right, so here are the answers. Um, the first one is nominal. Labels for chocolate tells you if they're the same or different, but there's no information about the order of chocolate. The second is ratio. Um, there's an ordering to it, more or fewer pencils. The scale between them is the same, and there's a true zero. There can be zero pencils in the pencil holder. Number three is ordinal. Um, letter grades do tell an order, higher or lower, but the scale between them isn't the same. The difference between an F and D could be a lot bigger than the difference between getting an A or B on the test. Number four is interval. There's an ordering to the years, um, and the scales between each year is standardized, but there's no starting point to historical years, which makes it interval. And number five is nominal, um, just categorical differences between each religion label. Okay, so that's it for this intro video to psychological measurement. See you all later.